his voice makes the difference when he speaks he relieves my troubled mind it's the only voice i hear that makes the and I'll follow one day at a time When I need him, I know where to find him In my place of prayer, his spirit hovers near Oh, his voice gently gives me my direction And I'll follow that I hear His voice makes the deal When He speaks He relieves my troubled mind It's the only voice I hear that makes the deal And I'll follow one day and His voice, it's a strong and a mighty tower Tearing down every stronghold in my life He's the master of the wind and the sea that rages When he speaks, all my darkness turns to light I have heard other voices speaking to me to deceive and to lead me astray oh but my shepherd's voice is different than all others i'm his sheep and i know my shepherd's way his voice Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, my brothers and sisters who are joining us from the different parts of the world tonight. Wherever you're joining, joining us from, we welcome, we welcome you. Whether you're watching via YouTube or you're right here on the Zoom platform, even if you're watching, you're watching uh, through the YouTube platform, the Facebook platform, whatever platform you're joining us from tonight, well, I want you to know that we welcome you. Uh, let me say thank you to Sister Hall for her kind words of introduction. And by extension, let me say thank you to Pastor Kevin Murray for extending the invitation uh, for affording me the opportunity to share with God's people tonight. I bring you quickly, I bring you greetings on behalf of the Manchester Lyricus Federation and all the contingent of workers. I know that our president is watching online. She's watching online even as we speak. Uh, welcome, Madam President. Let me also say, let me also say, uh, I bring, also bring you greetings on behalf of my dear wife, Nadia. This evening, I wanna bring you to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, the book of Acts. I wanna bring you to the book of Acts this evening. Yesterday, yesterday we had a kettle wampus time, both in the morning, and in the evening, in the morning, we would have looked at, we would have, we would have looked at uh, when 
his coming. When is he coming? When is he coming? We looked at the coming of Jesus. Huh? When is he coming? Uh, the Thursday we looked at how, we looked at how he's going to come. Sabbath we looked at when he's going to come, and we we discovered Thursday that his come that, that when he that that his coming is no secret. There's no secret in the rapture. We discovered that on Thursday. On Sabbath we discovered that when he's coming, he's coming soon. We will see all the signs that are telling before as Matthew twenty four pointed to us all the signs of his coming. Uh, we also looked at Second Timothy chapter three. Uh, verses 1 to 5, in, in perilous time, in the last days, perilous time shall come. We looked at, at many signs and we saw that he is coming and the signs are telling. But tonight, I want to bring you to the book of Acts. Acts, Acts chapter 2. And I want to take you from verses 1 through to 13. Acts 2, 1 through to 13 tonight. Tonight, I want to speak to you under the caption, what really is tongues? What really is tongues? What really is tongues? Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. The Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And he filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And, and, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, said one to another, Behold, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, the Parthians and the Medes and the Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and the Cappadocia and in Pontus and in Asia, in, in Phrygia, in Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya and Cyrene, about Cyrene, uh, uh, the strangers at Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and wondered in doubt, saying one to another, what mean it is? Others mocking, saying, these men are full of new wine. Boy, your head with me while I pray. Father in heaven, teach us tonight. Lord, you are the master teacher. Speak a word tonight that will edify, that will elevate. Oh Lord, that will extrapolate sin from our lives and bring us closer to you. Hear our prayer tonight. Oh Lord, hide me behind the old rugged cross of Calvary. Crucify self. And we pray that only you and you alone will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Tonight, I'm going to speak to you in the caption, what is tongues? What is tongues? What is tongues? This has been a very controversial topic within the church. It has been a very controversial topic for many. Very controversial topic. Many are wondering, what is tongues? Some say tongues are babbling. Some say uh, going in the church and say a shalom, a shalom, and all of these sort of things, they call it tongues. Ah, But we want to see tonight what does the word of God, what does the word of God, what does the solar scriptura, what does the biblical account say to us about the issue? Because I tell you before and I tell you again, uh, I, 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 I believe in the Bible. I believe the Bible is God's word to man. I believe in it. And because the Bible says it, I believe it. And that settles it. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. So tonight I'm going to come to you with no new word, just a strange on the same old Bible. Well, 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 well. Ask the preacher, where did all this begin? God made two people. God made two people. God made Adam. God made Eve. God made Adam, God made 
Eve. Adam and Eve communicated to each other. They, they only spoke one language. Are you with me? They only spoke one language. Adam spoke to Eve, Eve spoke to Adam. Hear me. None was speaking French and the other wasn't speaking Spanish. They, they spoke the same language. They spoke the same language that, 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 that each other would speak. So God did it that way so they could communicate with each other. Are you with me? So Adam and Eve would hold hands, they would walk, they would talk, they would sing together, they would pray together. Adam and Eve held hands and they prayed. But you know, you know, sin entered the earth. Sin entered the human race. Sin entered the earth. And since sin entered the earth, things have changed. Things began to change. It so happened that it got so bad that the first murder came into being. Cain killed Abel. And sin Sin took over the antediluvians to the point where God became so angry, God decided that he's going to wipe out this earth with a flood. God wiped out the earth with a flood. Ah, can I tell you that Noah built an ark and the clean went in by sevens, the unclean went in by two. But can I tell you that after the flood, after the flood, after the flood, ah, uh, there came those who have been populated in the earth after the flood. And they decided that they were going to build a tower that would reach unto heaven for never again, if God should decide to flood the earth, they should not be able to die or be washed away. It, 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 it was a state of rebellion. And if you go, if you walk with me to Genesis chapter 11 tonight, if you walk with me to Genesis chapter 11, you'll see where the Bible says, and the whole earth, the whole earth was one language and one speech. In other words, everybody spoke the same language. Everybody used the same speech. The whole earth was one language and one speech. But it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Verse 3 says, And they said one to another, Go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had for mortar. Uh -huh. And they said, Go let us build a city, a land, tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad to the face of the whole earth. Hear me. These people never wanted to be scattered throughout the entire earth. And they are building a city going on to heaven. Should there be a flood again, they would never be washed away. So everybody is confining themselves in one place. Hear me, hear me. But God, but God says, I'm going to go down. I'm going to change the language because these people are determined. These people don't desire to change. They're not repenting. So, so I have to change. I have to give them the ability to speak different languages. Are you with me? Uh, I'm showing you where it all began. I'm showing you where it all began. God knows what he's doing. The Bible says, the Bible says, and in verse seven, verse, verse six, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down. Notice the Bible says, let us. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, let us go down. And they are confounded their language. Uh -huh. That they may not, that they may not understand one another's speech. So when somebody asks a cement, hear me. When somebody asks a cement, if I could contemporize it for you, then carry water. When somebody asks a water, they carry black. Are you with me? Because they could not understand each other, but each other anymore. But let me let me let me settle the score right here and now. Does this mean that God is the art of confusion? No, my friend. The devil is the art of confusion. It was the devil who, 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 who approached angelic beings in heaven. It was the devil who Revelation tells us that he used his tail to draw a, a third of the stars of heaven. It was the devil. Hear me, hear me. The devil is the author, is the beginner of confusion. It was the devil who came to earth, confused Eve. 
uh, tricked her when God said, in the day you eat of the tree, you shall surely die. It was the devil who said, you shall not surely die. It was the enemy that did all of this, not God, not God. It was because of the enemy confusing mankind. Why mankind is rebellious? It was because of the enemies doing, and no God, no God has to confound their language in order to get them to conform. Are you with me? But God is not the author of confusion. So God is allowing them not to speak in different languages, to speak in different tongues. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. The Bible shows us. So, 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 so verse 8 says, so the Lord scattered them abroad from upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of, of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from this did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Now hear me. Because God, God is a wise God. God, even though God scattered them through the entire face of the earth, what he did. So those people who spoke the same language, they were grouped into one place. Are you with me tonight? So those who speak Spanish, for example, were placed in one section by themselves. Those who spoke French were placed in another section by themselves. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Those who spoke English were placed in another section by them. So God did a grouping. So, so, so while they're over there, they can still populate. They can still, they, they, they can, they can still procreate. Hear me. The, the earth can still be filled. Mankind can still communicate one to another. Hear me. God confounded them and then scattered them. But He, but He grouped them. Are you with me? So here when we come to Acts chapter 2, uh, talking about what is tongues tonight, here when we come to Acts chapter 2, uh, we saw when the, when, when the disciples were in the upper room. The disciples were in the upper room. Notice the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was, was, was fully come. Welcome, Elder Brown. Good to see you. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were, in, they were with one accord in one place. They were with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Are you hearing me tonight? As of a rushing mighty wind. And, and, and the Bible says, and it sat and it filled all the house where they were sitting and appeared unto them cloven tongues. Now hold on. Ask me what does the word cloven mean? The word cloven, the word cloven, the word cloven means split, separation, division, partition, cleavage. So for the woman, for the woman, if you go, if you go in, in front of your mirror, you'll find something here that's called a cleavage. Why? Because there's a split separation, division, partition. So that's why it's called a cleavage. No, notice when a man, when a man, when a man is married, he leaves his father, his mother, he cleaves unto his wife, and they become one flesh. That's cleave. So cleave means to join, but cleavage means to separate. Two words very close. But very, but very opposite in meaning. Are you with me tonight? So cleave is to join, but cleavage is to separate. Hear me? We're, 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 we're going through the word of God tonight. The Bible shows us, the Bible shows us, the Bible shows us that here were appeared unto them cloven tongues or divided tongues or separated tongues or split tongues. So they had the ability to speak different languages, multiple languages. The Holy Spirit is giving them the ability to speak more than one language. Therefore, the Bible says, uh, it was like a, a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Amen, somebody. Yeah, yeah. As the Spirit gave them utterance and they were dwelling at, at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard him speak in his own language. Tonight, I want somebody to understand what tongues is. Tongues is simply a language. And that's what Revelation 14, verse 6 says. And I saw another angel, another angelus, another messenger, flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Because tongue really represents a nation, a language. It's a language. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what tongue is. It is a spoken language, a language that is understood by people within your, within your societal region. So hear me. God knew, God knew 
God had a reason why he scattered the people throughout the earth in Genesis. He had a reason why he scattered them throughout the earth. And for this reason, for this reason, notice, notice when we come to Acts 2, God pulls back all those who have scattered. Uh, God pulled them back on the day of Pentecost. God scattered them in Genesis, but on Pentecost, he's pulling them back. Uh, here's the reason. Uh, here's the reason to that. God pulled them back because he wanted or he needed to inform mankind of, a sec of his second return. He needed, of, of his soon return rather, he needed to inform mankind of, of a better way. He needed to call sinners back to him. He needed, he needed to understand that he came, he died he, for them. So they can get they can get freedom from sin and he's coming back again. God wanted the gospel, the Evangelion, the good news of salvation to go through the entire earth. So here's a situation where God in Genesis confounded them, scattered them, and after they have scattered, God knew from then that the gospel had to go through the entire earth. So God scattered them through the earth. And now God pulled everybody into one location. Ah, and these people are coming from every single part of the earth. So much so, when the gospel is preached at Pentecost, they can return from whence they came and share the same good news. Tonight you may be joining us from Spain. You may be joining us. You may be joining. You may be joining us from, from 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 right here in Jamaica. You could be joining us from Canada. You could be joining us from England. Wherever you're joining us from tonight, I want you to know that the gospel it can be presented to you in your own language. Hear me, somebody. Ah, the Bible says. The Bible says. The Bible says. Notice the Bible says. The Bible says. The Bible says to us, and, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, 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 devout men out of every nation under heaven. Out of every nation under heaven. That's where they came from. And when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man, every man, every single man heard them speak in his own language. Why? Because tongues is a language. What is tongues tonight? Tongues is a language. And they were all amazed. The Bible says, saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? In other words, because the Galileans should not have the ability to speak their language. They did not, they did not, they were not born speaking their language. Hear me, somebody. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. It was God who gave mankind the ability to speak different languages. That's why today we have French, we have we have, we, we, we we have English, we have Spanish, we, we have all these different languages because God was the one who did it. Originally, it was only one language, but at the end of the day, we end up with multiple languages because God is it's out of this that we found different races coming forth. Somebody may wonder, then, then, then preacher, if God, if God only made Adam and Eve, why do I have Chinese? Why do I have Indian? Why do I have Japanese? Why do I have, why do we have so many different nations? Why do we have so many different tongues? Because God did it. And God gave them different features. All are made in his, in his image. We all have different features, different language, because just to ensure that they are classified, they, they are placed in a group so God can easily, so you can say, these people who look like this, speak like this. Are you with me? God did it for a reason. God no, God is a God of order. Are you with me tonight? God is a God of order. God is a God of order. Somebody ought to understand tonight. This, this the, the, the message of tongues, the, the understanding of tongues has become a confusing subject for many, but the Bible explains it clearly. These people from every nation on heaven. We're now hearing these men speaking in their own language and they were all amazed, marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these we speak Galileans? And how we hear every man in our own tongue, uh, wherein we were born. The tongue you are born in is the country you are born in that the language you speak within the country in which you are born. Are you with me tonight? And, and the Bible, the Bible goes further to even list some of them. The Bible says there were there were partitions and there were Medes and there were Elamites and there were dwellers in, Mesop in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus and in Asia. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. In Phrygia, in Pamphylia, in Egypt. Uh, where is Egypt in Africa? Amen, somebody. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in the parts of Libya, around Cyrene, and the strangers of Rome. Amen, somebody. The Jews and the proselytes, the Greeks and the Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. 
Hear me, hear me, hear me. And we're all amazed and we're in doubt, saying one to another, what mean it this? In other words, in other words, God, God, God is giving mankind the opportunity to hear the gospel before he comes again. God is giving mankind the opportunity to hear the good news of salvation before he comes again. God is giving mankind the opportunity to repent of the sin before he comes again. God did it so mankind will not have any excuse. Can I tell you tonight, it was because of this act that transpired so many years ago while we have the gospel today. Thank God that he has scattered men through the earth. Thank God that he had confounded their language. Thank God that he pulled them back together and then sent them back where they're from. So the same gospel can be scattered through the earth. Thank God. And tonight, 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 because of this wonderful act of God, tonight I can speak to you in English. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Somebody, 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 somebody who knows Spanish, probably on a Sabbath, may go in a church and say, Feliz Sabado. Ah, uh, somebody, 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 somebody who knows English may say, Happy Sabbath. Are you with me? Ah, uh, if that's a Sabbath morning. Ah, uh, somebody, 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 somebody who knows a little Hebrew may go into a Hebrew country and say, Shabbat Shalom. But can I tell you something? Here is where we have, we have a problem. Tongues was given to the church for the edification of the church, for the edification of the bridge. Tongues were given ah, for a sign unto the church. Why did God give tongues? Can I, can I, can I, can I read for you from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 today? The Bible says, follow after charity. What is charity tonight? Charity is love. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that he may prophesy. What does it mean to prophesy, preacher? It means to preach. Rather that you may prophesy, rather you may preach. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. What's an unknown tongue now? It's an unknown language. For those who speak in English, when, they, when, it's, a, when it's a Spanish community, you're speaking a language that is not known to the people. You're speaking in an unknown tongue to the people. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Why is this so, preacher? Because God knows the language. It was God who gave the language in the first place. It was God who confounded them in Genesis. It was God who scattered them throughout the earth. It was God who grouped them and gave them the ability to speak that language in that area. It was God who did it. And so because it's God who did it, when you speak the language and the church don't understand, God knows exactly what you're saying. But here we have a problem when you do that. The Bible says, let, let me read for somebody tonight. The Bible says, ah, for no man understand him. Come on now. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But, but he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification. Amen. An exhortation and comfort, and he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, hear me, edifies himself. But the but he that prophesied edifies the church. Come on, somebody, which is greater? The church must learn. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why the Bible goes on further to say, I will. I, I Paul says, Paul says, right into the church at Corinth. Paul says, I would that he all speak with tongues, but rather that he prophesied, for greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. If I'm going to speak in another tongue, if I'm going to speak in another language, it therefore means that it is done for the church to learn. It is done for the church to understand. It is done for the church to be edified. Watch me. If I'm going to speak in a if I'm going to speak in another language, it therefore means that I must have an interpreter. Somebody must be there to interpret what I am saying. So if I go to Spain and I speak English, hear me, I can't walk into a Spanish-speaking church and I'm speaking English when the people don't understand English. I must have somebody who knows English and knows Spanish and is able to translate the English that I'm speaking to, to the, to the Spanish-speaking people for them to understand what is being said. Ah, let me show you. Let me, let, me, let me read a little further for you. The Bible says, No, brethren, if I come speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Except uh, I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. And even things without life giving song, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the song, how shall it be known what is piped or harp? 
In other words, in other words, in other words, how can the person know? How can the person know what is what is being said? If I if I come to you, if I come to you and I'm playing something, I'm playing do, 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 that's pure noise, that's pure noise, that's pure noise, that's pure noise. But what if, what if, what if I I am I'm, I'm playing amazing grace, how sweet. By the virtue of the sound and the distinction of the sound, you can, Mark, you, you don't hear my voice singing, but you hear the instrument. There's a distinction in the sound. You can sing this song, Amazing Grace, because of the distinction in the sound. You understand what is being played. So the, so the Bible says, and even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sound, how shall it be known what is pipe or harp? It has to give a distinction in the sound. So if somebody walk in the church and a shallow, a shallow, a shallow, a shallow, a shallow, that's pure noise. That's not tongues. That's not tongues. It's noise. And God is not the author of confusion. Tongues is a language. Tonight, I want somebody to understand what tongues is. The Bible, the Bible says, for if the trumpet give an uncertain song, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Who shall prepare? No, notice the Bible says, so likewise he except uttered by the tongue. Words is to be understood. How shall it be known what is spoken? For he shall speak into the air. There are, hallelujah, it may be so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I, if I know not the meaning, Amen. I'm reading the Bible. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. For those of us who are watching on YouTube or, or where it's on, you want, you want to know where the preacher is reading from. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Uh, the Bible says, therefore, 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 if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. Amen. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so, even so he, for as much as he are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that he may excel to the edifying of the church. I have a problem. When people enter the church, and they enter the church and hear me, they don't teach one thing. All you do is make nice and put on water and tell us to buy your water and sow a seed. You're not teaching people Bible. Hear me, somebody. When you come in the church of the living God, you must hear what the Bible says. You must learn scripture. You must learn Bible. I have a problem. People come and sow a seed, 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 and they they they, 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 they give you a prosperity gospel, a feel good message for you to go home, yeah, for you to go home and relax and feel good. And and, and your church is full. A feel good message, a feel good message. But and, and people roll on the ground and they, they flatter themselves and, and they show you the sunrise. And for some of the women have mercy, they show the sunrise and the sunset. Amen. Everybody can see what they're wearing. God is not like that. God would not throw on his people like that. Hear me tonight. This, this message might be a hard one for somebody to, to swallow. It might be a hard one for somebody to swallow. But I have made a commitment to God that I will preach the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. So tonight I've got to show you what the word of God says. Hear me. Hear me. I know. I know. I know. You are born in something. You are raised in something. I know you've been holding on to your tongues a long time. You've been holding on to problems. But you, and you never understood it clearly. But tonight I'm clearing up the matter for you. Tonight, and I'm using the word of God to clear up the subject for somebody. Notice, I'm not even making a lot of noise tonight. I, I am gently walking you through the scriptures because I want you to see it clearly tonight. Tonight, when we leave here, you should leave here saying, the Bible says. The Bible reveals to us tonight. The Bible reveals to us. The Bible says, Wherefore, verse 13, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, come on now, my spirit pray, but my understanding is unfruitful. Come on. What, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. Ah, I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Verse 16, as when thou shalt bless with the spirit, 
How shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen at the giving of thanks? Seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. And amen simply means I am in agreement with. Amen means I agree. So the person cannot say amen. The person cannot say I agree because the person doesn't understand what you are saying. Somebody tonight can say amen. Somebody tonight can say praise the Lord. Somebody tonight can say thank you, Jesus, because I'm speaking the language of the people and they understand the English language in which I'm speaking. Anybody speaking English tonight can say amen because they understand exactly what the preacher is saying. God is doing this. God is doing this because he wants to save every language. He wants to save every tongue. He wants to save every nation, every kindred, every person. You hear me? God wants to save you. So God is putting the gospel to you in your language. The Bible, the Bible says to us tonight, for thou verily give us thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God, Paul says. I speak with tongues more than all of you. In other words, Paul is saying, I speak in, in, in multiple languages than all of you here. I know more languages except for, most, for some of us who go to school and we learn the Greek and we learn the Hebrew. Uh, some of us learn the Arabic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of us learn, learn Spanish and we learn French and we learn a whole host of different languages. Are you with me? Uh, like one Dr. Gottner York who spoke about 14 or 15 languages fluently. Yeah, 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 yeah. A whole ton, like, like one Dr. Newton, you Pantam Cregan, who speak multiple languages. Like so many of our, of our leaders in the church that speak so many, so many languages fluently. Hear me, hear me, hear me tonight, hear me tonight. Ah, uh, like hear me. Uh, I remember, I have a Greek teacher, Dr. Dr. Michael Olipe, he's from Africa. He's from Africa. And I can tell you, in Africa, they speak multiple languages. I have multiple languages, but they say that he speaks English. Now he's able to go there and to preach the gospel in their in their in their in their in their in their country, uh, in, in, in their area, and he's also able to preach it in Jamaica. Are you with me? Without having a translator, because the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in their language and in the one here. The, the difference in Acts 2 was that the disciples never went to any school uh, to learn the language. It was just that the Holy Spirit gave them the ability right there and then. I want to let you know that many years ago, some years ago, we have Reverend Evangelist here in Jamaica by the name of uh, Fitz Henry, a good friend of mine, good friend of mine, good friend of mine. Uh, I remember we sat down and we were speaking about the same experience where he went to Africa to preach, didn't know their language. And the person who was translating was translating the message too slowly for him when he wanted to move on, when he wanted to preach the gospel. And so, and so he just started preaching and the people heard every single word in their language and thousands were baptized. That was the moving of the Holy Spirit, similar to what, trans, what transpired at Pentecost. Are you hearing me tonight? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit teaches us in different ways. And he works, he works, in a, but at the end of the day, he ensures that the gospel goes to the end of the earth. So if you're, if you're laying in your silly posture tonight, here's what you need to know, that Jesus wants to save you. Jesus wants to save you. Here's what you need to know. You, tonight you should know you need to forsake sin. God is speaking to you in your language tonight. You need to forsake sin. Whether you're in Hawaii, whether you're in Trinidad, whether you're in Bahamas, whether you're in Canada, whether you're in, in, in England, whether you're, 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 you're right here in Jamaica, wherever in the world you're watching from, I want you to know tonight that God wants you to give up sin. The Bible, the Bible says to us tonight, the Bible says to us, the Bible says to us. I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also that 10,000 words in an unknown tongue or an unknown language. He says, brethren, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice be children, but in understanding be men. In the law, he says it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak unto this people yet for all that will they will not hear me, say the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serve not for them that believe not, 
but for them which believe. For if therefore the whole church come together in one place and all speak with tongues, the Bible says, there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers. Will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophesy, amen, and, and there come in one that believe it not, and one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judge of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. How is it then, brethren, uh, when he come together, everyone has a sin, heart a doctrine, heart a tongue, heart a revelation, heart an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edify, the Bible says. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at most by three, that and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. Amen, somebody. If there be no interpreter, hold your peace in the church. Amen. Keep silence in the church and let him that speak in the church unto God. And let him speak to himself unto God. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For he may know, for he may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and may all be comforted. And all the spirits and the prophets are subject to the prophets. Hold up. Ah, for God is not the author of confusion, but peace as in all churches of the saints. Hear me. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. I've explained to you what tongues is. I've told you that tongues is a language. I've told you the reason that God gave tongues. He gave tongues so he could save sinners from sin. So the gospel can be traversed through the entire earth. Hear me, somebody. The Gentiles were seen as unclean. The Gentiles were seen as, as, as outcasts. And Acts 10 shows us where the Gentiles received the gospel and they received the same gift that the, that the Jews got in Acts 2. Acts 10 shows us where the Gentiles received the same gift. Acts 10. That shows us when they receive the same gift as was given to the to the to the, to the Jews in Acts two. To the Gentiles received the gospel. Got, they got the gift of tongues, the gift where they could speak in multiple languages. Are you hearing me tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Gentiles received that gift, and the Gentiles started running with the gospel like wildfire. Some the weeks were determined upon the Jews. Some the weeks the Jews had the opportunity to carry the ball. But hear me some, but the Jews blundered somewhere along the land. The Jews failed to carry the gospel. And so the Gentiles ran with the gospel throughout the entire earth. I want you to know tonight, I want you to know tonight that we thank God for the Gentiles. Because of the Gentiles, Jesus used the Jews. Jesus used the Gentiles as well. And tonight, 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 I want to let you know that when you become a Christian, you're considered a modern Jew. I want to know, I want you to know tonight. I want to, you could be living the life like a Gentile, but God is willing to accept a Gentile who is willing to turn from his sinful ways tonight and accept him. The gospel, the gospel is to give into every nation, language, tongue, and people saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him tonight that made the heaven and the sea and the earth and the fountains of waters. Hear me tonight. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because God has made her drink of the wine of the wrath of her. God tonight is calling somebody says, come out of her, my people. God tonight is giving you the opportunity to hear the good news of salvation, to hear the euangelion in your language, in your tongue. And God is asking you tonight to respond accordingly. God is asking you tonight to repent. Ah, all those who, all those who gathered at Pentecost looked at each other and they wondered if the disciples were full of new wine. They wondered if they were drunk. But Paul, but, but Peter, 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 Peter standing up with the 11, ah, lift up his voice like a trumpet. Peter said, ah, it's noon. These men are not drunk. As a matter of fact, these men don't drink alcohol. Hear me. These men are not drunk. But, 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 but this is what was spoken of by Joel the prophet. Joel the prophet had prophesied that in the last days, God would pour out the spirit upon all flesh. Hear me. So they, they were here, they were here, they were here informing, Peter was informing them that this is what was spoken of 
by Joel, the prophet, and Peter went on to further to say, uh, in Acts 2 and verse 30, he said, repent. Uh, Peter said, repent, repent, repent. Uh, the gift of tongues was given so somebody could hear the gospel. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you that the Holy Ghost gives different gifts? While he was speaking about the gift of tongues, hear me, the Holy Spirit gives different gifts. So, so, so Ephesians help us to understand that some is teaching, some preaching, some, 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 some is prophesying. The gift, the Holy Spirit gives varied gifts. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, can I tell you something tonight? Each of us, each of us, each of us will get at least one gift from the Holy Spirit. When you surrender your life to God, you will get at least one gift. Not everybody will get the gift of tongues. Not everybody will be able to speak in multiple languages. One sir, one sir sister told me that when, when, when she went to her Sunday church, the pastor slapped her in the face, boxed her. She, she bleached her whole night, tarrying for the Holy Spirit, tarrying for the Holy Spirit, wanting to speak in tongues. And when she couldn't speak in tongues, she was slapped in the face and she could not take part in church. Couldn't take part in church because they said that she wasn't filled. She, she wasn't filled. So because she wasn't filled, she couldn't take part in church. Can I tell you tonight, how do you get Holy Ghost? How do you get Holy Ghost? Every time that the Bible shows up, every time that baptism shows up, Holy Spirit come down. Amen, somebody. But to, to speak, to speak, to speak, to speak, to speak in, in, in different languages, hear me, is the Holy Spirit who gives you the ability to learn different languages and to speak in different languages. And not everybody will get that gift. He give it to whosoever he will, whoever he chooses for the edification of the church and the spreading of the gospel in different parts. God knows that he's going to send some people to, Sp to Spain. He's going to send some people uh, to, 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 to France. He's going to send. So God equips you for the task ahead. I want you to understand tonight. But tonight, God is saying, repent for the remissions of sins. Repent, and you can get forgiveness for your sin. I don't know. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know what your problem is. I don't know. I don't know if it's the boyfriend. I don't know if it's the girlfriend. I don't know. But if you look in the chat tonight, there's a decision card. There's a link. They're watching via YouTube. Check, check, check. There, 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 there's a link that's posted on your channel tonight. There's a link that's posted on your channel. All you have to do tonight is click on that link. If you need prayer, click on the prayer link. Click on the prayer link tonight. Sign up and say, say pray for me. Somebody will see your request. I can tell you that Pastor Kevin Murray will see your request and he will, he, he will respond to you. Hear me? And, and the prayer team who meets at six every evening and meets in the mornings, hear me? And they pray for you. Somebody will be praying for you. If you, need, if you need to repent of the sin tonight, you've heard the gospel in your language. You know that he, Jesus came. You know he, he, he suffered. You know he bled. You know he died. You know he was crucified. You know he was placed in a tomb. You know he was, he was early upon the first day of the week. You know that he, that, that he went to heaven. He said to his father, Father, glorify me with the glory which I was glorified with before. Uh, you know that he has taken another phase of his heavenly ministry. He's now in the heavenly sanctuary, interceding on your behalf and on my behalf. You know that he is in the intercession process and you know that any day now he's going to take off his priestly robe. He's going to put on his kingly robe. He's going to ride out of heaven and he, he, he's, he's going to say, uh, he that is unjust, let him be unjust till he that is righteous, let him be right. You know that he's coming again. You know he's going to burst the eastern skies. You know he's going to come down in mid -air. You know he's going to call his saints home. You know it's going to be a glory day. You know it's going to be a hallelujah day. You know some are going to be on, 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 on Amen Street and Praise Avenue. Hear, hear me, hear me, hear me. And hallelujah Boulevard. Some, and can I tell you, the, the sweetest place I want to be is at the feet of Jesus. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? You know tonight that tonight, tonight you know that God is calling you to come into this joy. You know he's coming again. Then tonight I'm just going to ask you to click on the link. Click on that decision card tonight. Click on the link tonight. Click on the link tonight. Sign up 
for the Christian Jubilee. Write your name on the road. I don't care which country you're watching from. I don't care where in the world you are. Hear me. There is a Seventh-day Adventist church close by you. Hear me, hear me, hear me. If you're living in Spalling, the Spalling Seventh-day Adventist church is willing to help you. No matter where you are from, the church of God stands ready to help you tonight. Tonight, tonight. Jesus is still in the saving business and he wants to save some sin sick soul. The gospel comes to you in your language tonight. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord tonight. Tonight, if you look on Zoom, you may be joining us on Zoom tonight. Probably you're joining us on Zoom. The link will be posted momentarily in the chat. The link we posted in the chat tonight. Just give somebody an opportunity tonight. Give somebody an opportunity to click on that link. Give somebody the opportunity to click on the link tonight. Give somebody an opportunity to click, to click on the link tonight. While we while we linger, while we linger, we linger, we linger, we linger, we linger just for a moment. We're waiting for the link to be posted because we want somebody to click on the link tonight. I don't know where you're from. And we know, we know, we know that this, that this Zoom room has been shared with many people. We know that the YouTube channel has been shared with many people. We know tonight that if it's even one soul who wants to surrender to God, heaven rejoices when one sinner repents. The gospel comes to you in your language because Jesus was a savior. Jesus scattered the men. Pull them back together, educate them, and then send them back out, hear me, to be missionaries. Why? Because he wants to save you and he wants to save me. That's why Jesus did it. That's why tongues came into being. That's why multiple languages came into being. Tonight you're hearing the gospel in your language. Click on the link tonight. The link is posted. The link is posted. You can see it on YouTube. You can see it on Zoom. The link is posted tonight. The link is posted. Why don't you click on the link tonight? Why don't you say, ride on, King Jesus? Why don't you say to that, Jesus, ride on? Jesus, I know I cannot do it on my own, so ride on, Jesus. Ah, let the devil, put the devil, throw him out your life. Ah, ah, hold the devil at bay. Ride on, King Jesus. You are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Ride on, King Jesus. Click on the link tonight. We linger just for that soul tonight. Just for that one soul who needs to click on the link tonight. We linger for that person tonight. God wants to save you. God wants to save you. The gospel comes to you in your language tonight. The, the link is posted. The link is posted. The link is posted. The link is posted tonight. It's posted on YouTube. It's posted on, uh, on, on Zoom. It's posted tonight. Take hold of the opportunity. You don't know what the future holds. Isaiah chapter 1, 18 to 20, my favorite Bible passage. I hear the prophet Isaiah saying, come now, uh, God speaking through him, saying, come now, and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool tonight. If you're willing tonight, if you, only if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured your soul because the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. God, 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 it is, God is not his wish that any of us should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Can I tell you tonight, Hebrews 6, verse, two, verse 4 to 6 says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away tonight. I'm talking to a backslider tonight. If you shall fall away. God says, I renew them again unto repentance. See, you crucify unto yourself the Son of God afresh, and you put him to an open shame. Every time you sin, you put God to an open the shame. The same pain he felt at Calvary. You're putting back him, you're putting him back to the same old pain all over again. Ah, that's not love, my friend. That's not love. If you love him, if you love him, serve him. The songwriter says, I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. Ah, I was nothing until you found me. Ah, you have given life. To me, heartaches and broken pieces. 
Ruined lives are why you died on Calvary. You are touched tonight. That's what I long for. You have given life to me. Grace is extended to somebody tonight. All you have to do is to click on the link. You've, got, you've heard the gospel in your own language, in your own language, when you are born tonight. Tonight, all you have to do is say, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust him and in his presence. I'm going to daily live. I'm going to pray for somebody tonight. I'm going to pray for somebody tonight. Bow your heads right where you are. And even while we are praying, even while we are praying, and the Holy Spirit is still moving, he's still pleading with you. If you, if you know, you, if you, know you, you need to click on that link tonight. If you know, if you know, you know, you know tonight that you need to click on that link, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Obey the voice of God tonight. God is calling somebody tonight. God is still calling somebody tonight. Tonight we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying tonight. Bow your heads right where you are. I'm going to pray for somebody tonight. Bow your heads right where you are tonight. Father in heaven, your word is gone forth. Oh God, we've answered the question tonight, what is tongues? We've, we, we've also shared the reason you gave tongues. Oh God, you gave tongues, oh God. So much so the gospel could go toward the ends of the earth. Lord, you are uniform, you are organized, and because of that, oh Lord, you have done it so strategic in such a way whereby today we are without excuse. God, we thank you for your work. We thank you for, 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 for the evangelion, and the gospel, the good news of salvation. We thank you, oh Lord, that each man has the ability to hear the gospel. And we pray, Lord, that as it travels throughout the earth as a witness, oh Lord, and then shall the end come. We pray, God, we pray that when the gospel is over, oh Lord, and when Work on earth is done. And you roll back the clothes and you call your children who that this person tonight who is hard in between two opinions will hear well done because because of this message tonight, oh God, you, your Holy Spirit have used this message tonight to help that sin sick soul to come into a saving relationship with you. Lord, we pray for those who will watch this sermon hereafter. Help them to click on the link. Help them to make the decision. Help them to make their calling and their election sure. And we thank you for hearing. We thank you for answering. We bless your name. We put everything now in your loving care. Take full control, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you real good. Join us tomorrow evening at 7 for another edition of Ride On. King Jesus, no man cannot hinder you. God bless you. Cleanse the leper, but we need.